Have you ever known that there are three types of salvation to every believer? I know most people think it's just uh, one salvation, but uh, it's three salvation which are all one. I know this one is confusing, but let me make it much more clear to you. Just the same way God is one, but with three different uh, uh, persons in one all right now even salvation is the same thing there's a salvation of your spirit the salvation of your soul and the salvation of your body and i'm going to make it much more simple for you to be able to understand and even tell you why the salvation of the soul is the hardest of all the three salvations remember the moment we hear the gospel the first thing which happens is that we believe and after we believe, then something is done in our spirit. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, And you has he quickened, which were dead in trespasses and sins. Did you hear that? Has he quickened? What is being quickened? The spirit which was dead has been brought alive. You see the point? So he quickens our spirit, which was dead because of our sins. Now, does that mean that is the end of everything? Well, we have the Holy Spirit. We cannot lose salvation now. But now there's something else which needs to be liberated. <laughs> you see, the Bible tells us, it tells us something different. Uh, here in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 4 to 6, that it, it says, Who will have all men to be saved? Have you been saved? Yes, you have been quickened. You've been saved. Your spirit has been saved, right? But then the Bible says, who will have all men to be saved and, there's something else, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hmm. So it means there's something else which needs to be done after you've been saved to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? For what purpose? You see, if you don't know that you're saved, you're in problem. So the second type of salvation is saving us from the consciousness of sin. We have already been saved, but then our mind still thinks that we are not saved. Think about uh, a lady living in the ghetto. And then uh, the son of the president, while he's crawling on Facebook, he sees this beautiful lady who lives in the ghetto. And, uh, you know, he does all he can to try and uh, talk to her. And then finally they get engaged and... In one way or another, they get married. And the lady is taken from the ghetto to state house. What happens now? The lady has been saved from poverty, but she still has the ghetto in her mind. Do you understand? She still, when she sees the police coming, she's running to hide. Because she still thinks she's in the ghetto where the police are supposed to beat every person who comes around. And they are very, uh, you know, doing wrong things to people. But now she's in state house she has to remove that mentality remove that mindset which is called the consciousness of our past life that is what god wants us to save the second part which is saving of our souls our mind remember the soul consists of three things the mind the emotions and the free will so god wants us to save our soul to save our minds because the spirit has already been saved you cannot lose salvation the spirit cannot be unsaved but then our soul there is a problem have you seen people who are saved but then they live like carnal christians why are they living as carnal christians it is because their soul their mind has not been saved they are still confused they are still baby christians does it mean they are not the children of the father yes they are but these are children who are lost. They do not understand themselves. So they have to save their minds so that they be able to come to the full knowledge of who they are. That's why the Bible says, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That is what we call the saving of the soul or the saving of the mind. And finally, of course, we understand that when um, on the last day, God is going to save our body. Our body is still not yet saved. That's why we do sinful things as believers. It is not really us doing the things, but it is the flesh. But then one day we have been told that our flesh shall be saved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. This vile body, this 
broken body, this sinful body will be changed. It will be saved from the powers of sin. So we shall be different people with glorified bodies. You see now, there are three points of salvation. And the first point is the most important because it, it is the one which carries all the other two. You see the point here. And uh, the salvation of our minds is the hardest part. To tell somebody that now you are not a sinner. You are not just a forgiven sinner. You are a righteous person. You, it's as if you never did any sin. You are justified. That is the hardest part to tell any believer who is still a baby carnal Christian. They need to liberate them, their minds from the consciousness of sin. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Peter that when, if, the, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Why is God saying if our heart condemned, uh, condemns us? Remember, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We cannot be condemned in the spirit, but our hearts can condemn us can condemn our mind because our hearts is part of the mind of the soul we are still condemning ourselves but god says even if your heart condemns you god has already overcome sin the spirit has been made alive now the only thing that you're waiting is to get a new body do you see the three distinct uh points of salvation that you need to do that you need to understand even the confession why does the bible say that uh, uh you need to believe 10.10, 10, uh, Romans 10.10, 10, it says that from our hearts we believe unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. What is this salvation and what? why righteousness and, sal and uh, here comes uh, uh, salvation? It is because righteousness, it is being pure. We are already pure because we have already been saved. Our spirit has been quickened, has been cleaned up. But then there is confession which has to be made to save our souls, to save our personality, to save our minds over the, over the time that we are here on the earth. You have to constantly tell your mind, hey, bro, you're saved. Stop thinking like a sinner. Stop thinking like a sinner because Satan looks at where you do not understand so that he can pounce on you on that point and he can keep on condemning you, keep on accusing you. All right? You see the point? So now you have to come to the knowledge of the truth to be saved to save your mind from the condemnation of sin from the consciousness of sin and finally very simple we get a new body our flesh is saved does that make sense to you god bless you